major layoffs in Silicon Valley. Google's parent company, Alphabet, announcing today it will cut 12,000 positions. Big tech companies have been carrying out a massive wave of layoffs, citing economic conditions as the main reason. So this is Silicon Valley. You may know it for being home to the headquarters of many of the world's largest high-tech corporations, including more than 30 businesses in the Fortune 1000, as well as thousands of promising startups. These companies include Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, HP, Google, PayPal, and many, many more. The last couple of years have been rough for the tech sector. I mean, it was recently stated that between Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, and many other tech companies, more than 70,000 employees have lost their jobs in the last year. Google's CEO recently sent an email to the company's staff that the firm will begin making layoffs in the US immediately. In other countries, the process will take longer due to local laws and practices. And of course, nobody can forget Elon Musk's firing of roughly 4,000 workers from Twitter shortly after taking helm of the megatech company. The company is clearly struggling. As of December 17, 72 of Twitter's top 100 advertisers had paused ad campaigns on the platform. And just recently, in an effort to cut costs following Elon Musk's chaotic $44 billion acquisition of Twitter, the social media giant has stopped paying its rent. And we turn now to the economy and the panic on Wall Street. I've spent the last 24 hours trying to get my head around why so many people lost so much money. All three major indexes posted big losses, with the S&P having its worst day since June of 2020. 2020 was one of the worst years ever for the tech industry. I mean, many tech stocks are down a whopping 75% from its highs a couple years ago. The headlines were often very grim for the tech sector. Sell-off after sell-off for many once thriving investments. When you look at the well-known FANG stocks, you see the pain the tech sector has endured. Let's look at Facebook. From its highs in September 2021, at one point Meta was down roughly 75%, and now is down just over 50% from last year. At one point Google was down 40% from its highs in September 2021, and at this point is down over 20% from last year. Of course, this is not to mention the other tech stocks that have been destroyed. Snowflake is down roughly 65% from its 2021 highs, and Spotify at one point was down a whopping 80%. When comparing the S&P 500 to the Nasdaq, it's clear that the tech industry has taken the brunt of the market seller. Companies across the industry are cutting costs, freezing new hires and laying off staff. Employees who joined these hyped pre-IPO companies and took much of their compensation in the form of stock options are now in deep underwater and can only hope for a future rebound. The industry lost $7.4 trillion in one year. These layoffs add to the current housing market downturn which is beginning to occur in the once extremely expensive Bay Area. Sales of single-family houses plunged by 37% year over year in the Bay Area. The median price of single-family houses in San Francisco plunged by 30% in December from the crazy peak in March 2022 by nearly 455,000 from 1.54 million to 1.08 million in nine months. That is 30% plunge from peak only put the median price back roughly where it had been in December 2020. Shows how crazy the price spike had been during the free money pandemic. But not everyone bought a house during these two years. So in essence, this 30% plunge isn't a big deal in the overall scheme of things. However, the average asking rent in San Francisco is now 3500 which is 15% higher than the pandemic low, which was $3,050 in 2021 but the average rent is still 15% below where it was in February 2020 and afford 22% below the days of peak rent, which as it turns out was seven years ago in 2015. Having hit a pandemic era high of 23% in the third quarter of last year, the effective office vacancy rate in San Francisco has ticked up to just over 24%, representing nearly 21 million square feet of vacant office space and buildings spread across the city. Before the pandemic, there was less than 5 million square feet of vacant office spaces in San Francisco, and the vacancy rate in San Francisco has averaged closer to 12% over the long term, with a much smaller base of buildings. Silicon Valley has now been an unfavorable environment for businesses for a few years. As of 2020, 35 companies from Silicon Valley had reallocated or opened new facilities in the Austin area in 2020 alone. 18 months ago, the online car user Carvana had such great prospects that it was worth 80 billion. Now it is valued at less than 1.5 billion, a 98% plunge 
it has literally collapsed. An era of rock bottom interest rates has abruptly ended. Money is no longer virtually free. Over a decade, investors desperate for returns sent their money to Silicon Valley, which pumped it into a wide range of startups that might not have received a nod in heady times. Extreme valuations made it easy to issue stock or take on loans, to expand aggressively, or to offer sweet deals to potential customers that quickly boosted market share. But 2022 seems to be the year in which it did end. So what's next for the tech sector? It seems that there isn't a day that goes by without a layoff announcement in the technology sector. Nvidia and Apple are the only two large tech companies I can think of that have yet to take this step. The tech sector is in a world of hurt. With earnings approaching, the tech sector could be in for a shock and more pain in 2023. 